December 13, you have been faithful. Yes, we can acknowledge that. And we have brought this message as an appreciation and attestation to your faithfulness. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. But also, check our own faithfulness in response to your faithfulness. I pray that where we have not been as faithful as we ought to be, you will help us to change. Amen. Where we are faithful, help us to be more dedicated. Thank you. Because we know you have answered. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. It's not going to be a long message. It's just a short exhortation. The faithfulness of our promising God. At the beginning of the year, God gave us a promise that it's going to be a year of fresh and fruitful beginning. For me, it's been a year of fresh and fruitful beginning. And I believe for you, it must have been a year of fresh and fruitful beginning. Yes, because sir. God is faithful with his promise. In Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. He is faithful that promise. Hebrews 11, verse 11. The scripture says, True faith also. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was the part of a child. When she was past age, how could Sarah deliver at 90 years of age? Because she judged him faithful who promised the faithfulness of our promising God. Faithfulness is one of the enduring characteristics of God. You know what the Bible says? God cannot deny himself. He is faithful. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. The Bible says, if he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. So people don't believe, but that doesn't change the faithfulness of God. If we believe not, he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. One of the enduring characteristics of God is his faithfulness. The Bible says God is not a man that is God is not the son of man. That he should change his mind and say, What I promise you, I'm sorry, I don't have the capacity to do it. Never. The Bible says, As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoken it, will he not bring it to pass? God is faithful. He never runs out of resources. So he doesn't need to apologize that I've run out of resources or I cannot fulfill uh, the promise I gave you. He never runs out of resources. He always fulfills his promises because his resources are inexhaustible in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible says that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches, not in the bank of Italy, according to his riches, not according to the you know, provision on earth, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He never runs out. If he gives you a promise, he can fulfill that promise. You know, it's different from man. Man can tell you, come in two days' time, I'll give you 1,000 euros. 
What happens if he dies tomorrow? By the time he comes in two days' time, he cannot fulfill that promise. He's not alive. But God lives forever. He doesn't die. When he tells you, come in two days' time, he will still be alive in two days' time to fulfill his promise. A person can say, come in a week's time, I will help you. But by the time you come in a week's time, he has run bankrupt. Some people have duped him. His resources have been set on fire. Robbers have related him and he says, I'm sorry. The money I want to use to help you. Yesterday, they broke into my house. They stole everything. The Bible says, the treasures in heaven. No thieves can break in. No robbers can penetrate. They are there. When God promises you, the resources are there to fulfill it. They are inexhaustible. Nobody can do anything about those resources. They will never be fulfilled. And I pray that we will have the confidence to trust and believe in the faithfulness of this our God in Jesus' name. God Amen. is the one that can give a promise and backtrack on that promise or neg on that promise. He fulfills his promises because his promises are yea and amen. amen. Let's just look at a few things. Number one, let's look at the, few, the fullness and the fairness of those promises. The promises of God, they are for those that love him and serve him. Now there are some people who want to serve God, but they don't want to benefit from him. They don't want to live for God, but when they run into trouble, they say, God, I'm here. Don't deceive yourself. I'll show you in the scriptures that the promises of God are for those who love him and serve him. That's important. There are people who question why this is so. Say, God created all of us. Why should God bless some people and not some people? God is not partial. That's why we're also going to see the fairness of those promises. That's important. God has established. Let's see it. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. See what the scripture says there. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. And verse 30, sorry. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse 30, God has established, and you need to live by that. You see what he said? Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, what did he say? I will honor. Them that honor me, I will honor. And them that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. God says, the way you treat God is the way he treats you. It's fear. You honor him, he honors you. You despise him, he despises you. You neglect him, he neglect, neglects you. You abandon him, he abandons you. He speaks to you. You refuse to hear. You will pray to him. He closes his ears. It's a fear deal. He's told you. And you know, there are some people that say, but you know, Pastor, I don't, I don't understand. I honor God. And then I ask them, how do you honor God? Say, you know how we honor elders? I prostrate. When I come to church, I raise up my hand. I honor God. That's not all honor. What else is honor? Proverbs chapter 3. Let me show you. Because your understanding of the scripture, is it that the understanding of the scripture is not full? Okay? Or if it is full, then they are self-deceived. You know, in the Hebrew language, in the Hebrew culture, when an elder comes, all right, 
If you honor that elder, what do you do? Say, we bring cola. Am I correct? Yes, sir. It's full of frustrating. It's full of beauty. Yes, sir. You are honoring that elder. We accept you to be our elder. We respect you to be our elder. And this is your right. We bring it. This is Kola. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with prostration. With thy substance. <laughs> bring Kola to God. That's honor. And look at what happens. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruits of all that increase, then what will God do? What did he say? They that honor me, I will, I will honor them. Now look at our text. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God said, you have honored me, I must also honor you. You have filled my storehouse, I must fill your storehouse. You brought substance into my house, I must bring substance into your house. We need to understand the scriptures well. So honor, yes, worshiping God is honor. But honor doesn't finish on that. You honor him also with your substance. There are people that say they are believers. Pay your tithe. They have a problem. Say, why must I pay tithe? That pastor talks about tithe and tithe and tithe. Oh, tithe bought where you are. Amen. Amen. Tithe is Slight tight is blowing, you know. Some this is winter, but it's blowing some heat, you feel comfortable. What is that? It's tight. God doesn't eat tight at the end of the day. We consume the tight, amen. Amen. The tight is God sitting on the seat, and we are sitting on the seat. What about the seat? Say they are talking about that. Why we don't talk about that? It's necessary. Honor the Lord with your substance. If you are a true believer, you will honor the Lord with your substance. And then God will honor you. And these are the people, they say, Pastor, I want you to lay your hands on me so that the anointing of abundance. Let a thousand pastors lay hands on you. You cannot prosper if you don't honor God. Because it's the one that says, when you honor me, then I will make your own presses to burst out with new wine. I will make your bands to be filled with plenty. So I'm not, my prayer cannot command God. People don't understand that. They think that some pastors have an anointing that when they bless you, you are blessed. Blessing comes from, and when you are disobedient, a thousand prayers is a waste of time. God will not hear. So it's important. Say pastor has come tonight again, I am doing so so that 2024, you can be blessed. Amen. That 2024, your bars can be filled with plenty. Your presses start with new wine. I'm showing Amen. you the way. God says, they that honor me, I will Amen. honor. Amen. You can't change that from the scriptures. They that despise me, I will despise. Amen. You can't change that from the scriptures. Let me, you know, I read to you, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. I read it to you already, all right? That says, even if people do not believe, God is faithful. He, he, he doesn't change. But let me read verse 12 to you. Open, open and see verse 12. Open and see verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign, with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. The way you treat God is the way he will treat you. Don't let one pastor come and tell you there is another way. No, 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 no. You deny him, he will deny you. He's speaking to you, you close your ears. When you pray and you are speaking to him, he will close his ears. He said it in Proverbs chapter, chapter 1. He said, I, I reached out unto them. They didn't regard. 
He said, I will laugh when their calamity comes. They will talk to me and I will not answer. The way you treat God is the way he will treat you. This new year, be faithful. Amen. Faithful, God is faithful. He has said, I will honor those who honor me. I will despise those who despise me. If you deny me, I will deny you. And is it simple English? Is it clear to everybody? Yes, yeah. sir. I, I don't know. I don't know in another way how to say it. That's the scriptures. But there are some people, I don't, I don't know, it's like self-deceit. They, they think it has to, there has to be another way. My brother, there is no other way. My sister, there is no other way. This is the way to bless him. You want honor? God says, honor me. I will honor you. They that honor me, I will honor them. And God is faithful. We are talking about the faithfulness of our promising God. He is faithful. The problem is that many times we are not faithful. And because of that, we cannot reap the faithfulness of God. And then we say, I'm a believer. Look at what, what is happening. The things are not going, going all right for me. Things are not going all right for you because God's hand is not involved in your life because you are not faithful. 2024, be faithful. Amen. Let every unfaithfulness pass away with this old year. Like an old garment is passing away, it's rolled away. Let it roll away. Amen. The new year, new faithfulness, Amen. new honor to the Lord, new Amen. worship of the Lord, new commitment to the Lord, and you will see what it will do in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know what I've said here? It says, the way we treat God is the way he will treat us. How do you treat God? Do you see that word? God. How do you spell it? Yeah. If you treat God as God, he will treat you well. But read that word, read it from the back to the, to the front. What do you read? Dog. Dog. You read it forward? God. You read it backward? The dog. And some people treat God like dog. He will treat you also the same way. He has said it. The way you treat me is the way I will treat you. So treat him well. So that he can treat you well. Amen. And you know what? At the end of the day, we are the losers. People don't understand that. We are the losers. You give God 10, that's an honor. When God is going to give you back, he doesn't give you 10. He gives you 50. He gives you 100. He multiplies it. What you gave to him is a seed. What he returns to you is an harvest. So who is the one that is losing the most? We are the ones. People don't understand that. They think, eh, when I withhold my tithe, I will suffer the pastor. You are suffering yourself. And we suffer the church. You are the biggest loser. Because the harvest you ought to reap, that harvest goes to zero. And instead of making progress, you are struggling on the same. Story. You are wondering what is happening. What is happening to me? I've been in Italy for 10 years. I've been in Italy for 20 years. I don't have anything to show for my being here. You are the one. You are the person that gains the most. And you need to understand that. And I pray that the Lord himself will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you read in Malachi chapter 3, we don't have the time because our time is gone. It says that God says, let's even read it. Malachi chapter 3, let's read it. Because the promises of God, they are fair. They are full, cover every area of life, but they are also fair. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. It says, Malachi chapter 3, 
verse 17. It says, and they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day, when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spared his own son, the servant him. Say, when the son serves the father, the father spears him. And God says, just like a father will spare the son that serves him, that's how I'm going to spare those who also are serving me. Look at verse 18. It says, Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served God and him that served him. There is a difference. And God is going to make a difference. To the people that serve him, God says, I will spare you like a father spears the son that serves him. To him that doesn't serve him, God says, I don't know you. I don't know you from Adam. I don't know you from anywhere. It's fear. It's a fear deal. So we're talking about the fullness and the fearness of God's promises. Because some people will say, God is partial. No, 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 no. There's no partiality in that. Do you accuse a teacher in a school? Say so he gave this one hundred. He gave this one ten percent. He is partial. Is that true? Oh, they did test. They did test. The test is marked. This one got hundred percent. This one got ten percent. He didn't prepare well. Then you say the teacher is partial because he gave this one hundred. He gave this one ten. That is he is fear. He has just given you the mark you deserve. Because that's how you perform the details. They say life is like that. When God evaluates you, he gives you what you deserve. Amen. Amen. Fear God is a fear God. And you cannot say he's blessing one more than the other. Go and look at the one that God is blessing. What is he doing? If you do the same, you will be blessed like him. Now, when I tell people sometimes, they wonder, I'm the firstborn in my family, and we are eight. I've been in Europe since January 1986. This is 37 years in Europe. Do you know in 37 years in Europe, I cannot say I have spent 2,000 euro on hospital bill for anybody in my family. They don't get sick. They don't go to hospital. God just kept them healthy. Is it because I'm special? No. God knows that the way I'm committed to his work, if there is sickness, where is the money? All the money goes... The way my family is committed, all the money goes into this. Conference has just finished. This conference has just finished. We have to pay for hotel. My children are here. My wife is here. I'm here. I invited two pastors from Manchester. Oh, we paid 1,120 from the family for our own hotel bills. So where is sickness comes? Where is the money going to come? Before they came, I paid 500 euro for my own building fund. Sister Joyce, did I give you? Okay. When you add that one, 500 euro, you add it to 1,120. That's already 1,620 just in these few days. If sickness comes, where do I have hospital bill? And all that one has gone into God's work. God says, no, I must keep your people healthy because you say you don't have tight. You will have hospital bill. You have money for pharmacy. You'll be running elder skelter. You tell me how many people have been in Europe for 37 years that my father, my mother, eight of us, and I'm the only one in Europe, don't spend money in hospital, don't spend money in, in medication, God kept them healthy. You, you think it's not because I'm praying. Faithfulness. Devourer will devour that money. Before you know it, they say, Grandma, 
just climbing, you know, the, and then she just sleep and all of this. So they said we should send 300,000 before they can even see her. You send that one. They said that one is admission fee. Then when they've treated her, medication and this and that, the hospital bill they give you, that won't happen. Six months down the road, they said, her uncle was just going by the roadside. One of Kada boy, we didn't know where he, he just hit him, bah, into the gutter. I, I don't know. He just, money upon money, money upon money. The one you don't want to give God that he will bless you more, you will be spending it on hospital bill, spending it on medication. The money will be going. The money is not in your pocket. And you don't, and people don't understand. And you tell them, and they remain blind. They remain deaf. But I pray that this new year, prove God. Amen. Amen. Prove God. You will see his faithfulness in your life. Because the faithfulness of our promising God is God is faithful. Sarah trusted him at 90. She received strength to conceive. He's faithful that promised. And I pray he will be faithful unto you in Jesus' name. It is a fair deal that God should be committed to those who are committed to him. God's promises are full. They cover every area of life. Life and godliness. Exceeding great and precious promises. That's the fullness and the fairness of his promises. How do we get those promises? Focus and faith for the promises. That's how you get those promises. You must not pay attention to the noise of Satan. And the noise of Satan is always very loud. Hey, something is coming. It will wipe you out. People will be running from pillar to post. But God is saying, my son, don't worry. I'm with you. When you pass through the water, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, I'll be with you. When you pass through the fire, the flame shall not kindle upon you. People are not hearing that. It is the noise of Satan they are hearing. The voice of the Savior they are not hearing. If you want to appropriate the promise of God in your life, you need to pay attention to the voice of the Savior and not to the noise of Satan. You must focus not on the threats from the wind, but on the testimony of the world. There will be threats from the wind. God has not promised any of us a smooth journey. What God has promised you is a destination. No matter how rough the road, you will get there. That's it. But it's not promised you that the road will be, will be smooth. It's not promised you that there will not be storms. It has not promised you that there will not be wind. We has promised you, irrespective of the storm, you will get there. You say, Pastor, how do I know? Let me read to you Psalm 66. You know, as I say, Psalm 66. What verse does your mind go to? Some people, it's verse, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord, but that's not the only passage in the scriptures. Psalm 66, verse 12. You know what the Bible says? Let's read it together. It says, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Let me ask you, if men were to ride over your head, is it a nice experience? No, sir. Experience? No, sir. But if you have caused men to ride over our heads, we went through fire and we went through water. But despite all those challenges, despite that rough journey, thou brought us unto in 2024, God will bring you to a wealthy place. It doesn't matter how rough the road. I don't care. It doesn't matter how stormy the weather. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether you are passing through water or you are passing through fire. It's not relevant. That wealthy place, it will bring you there. That's the guarantee from God. 
That's why our focus should remain what it ought to be. Your focus should be what it ought to be. They're not frightened because of anything. Keep your eyes on the Savior, not on the storm. Jesus told Peter, come on the water. And he started coming. But he shifted his eyes from the Savior. And the Bible says, when he saw the storm and the wind boisterous, he started to, to fear and he started to sink. If you shift your eyes from the Savior and you put your eyes on the storm, my brother, you will sink. My sister, you will sink. That situation will sink you. But keep your eyes on the Savior. Yes, the storm is there, brother. You will go through the storm. You will go through the water. You will go through the fire. But for sure, you are landing in a wealthy place. The road may be rough, but you will get to your destination. Amen. Yes. So let your focus be on your destination. Let your focus be on what God has promised you. The Bible says that, you know, he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give us an expected end. Let your focus be on that expected end, on the promise where God is taking you to. 2024, focus on those promises. Focus on those promises. Focus on those promises. Focus on that end destination, on that expected end. Troubles, right, left, and center, it doesn't matter. It's normal. It's normal. Troubles will come. No troubles. No, some people don't like pain. But you know, pain is good. Many of us would have been dead if there were no pain. You know why? Your leg has a problem. It is pain that makes you to realize that leg has a problem. Then you treat it. You understand? And then you get better. If your nerves are dead and you don't feel that pain, until that leg will be amputated, you will not know. Pain is good. It allows you to say, something is wrong here, pay attention and bring it back to normal. You have a headache, then you know you have to do something to restore yourself. If you don't have that pain until you die, you will not know. Then there's some, there's some, you know, problems are good. Amen. So people Amen. don't like problems. Problems are good. Somebody says, what kind of preaching is pastor preaching tonight? My brother, problems are good. If you don't have problems, sometimes you cannot make progress. Much of the progress in the world today is as a result of solving problems. Amen. And when you solve problems, you make progress. When there are no problems to solve, you remain on the same spot. So why are you troubled? There is tough. Okay. Do you know that if any road is so smooth, it doesn't lead to anywhere good. You are going through the wilderness. Turn over here. Turn over there. But let me tell you, along that path, you will see many beautiful flowers because nobody has gone that way. But when you see a place where a thousand people have gone and it's so you say, ah, this is a good road. You will not see any flowers. The people that have gone before you, they've already harvested all the flowers. Amen. The road is too smooth. There is nothing good at the end of it. It's too smooth. All the fruit and all the, the people that paved the way to make it smooth like that, they've already harvested everything. You'll be going through a smooth, smooth, a smooth road but you are not getting anything. But when the road is rough, many people are not going through that way. All the fruits, all the beautiful flowers, they are there. Then you'll be, you know, you'll be suffering some of the, 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 the sharp, you know, cutting of your flesh from the, you know, from the thorns. But you'll be happy. This is another beautiful flower. you put it. This is another wonderful fruit. you keep it. When you get to your destination, say, well, to hell with all the, all the thorns. Even this fruit and these flowers, I, I, I like. Is that also? Yes, sir. Any road that is too smooth. My brother, there is nothing good at the end, though. So people who are always looking for 
short cuts, you know, smooth road, they always lose out. They don't want to work in the factory. Ah, factory is too. And they want to push a little market and get 2,000 euro. That's how they land in uh, prison, Italian prison, 10 years. Their lives are wasted because they're looking for a smooth and easy way to work. There is none. It's deception. Amen. Amen. Because in this coming year, on the promises of God, have faith for those promises. Focus on the Savior, don't focus on the storm. We are encouraged to be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And you know why? Many times God will give us an exhortation and give us an example. Hebrews chapter 6 said, Be followers of them who through faith and patience hearing the promises. That's an exhortation. But immediately he gave you an example the example of Abraham in verses 13 to 15. You find the exhortation, you find the example. You look at Genesis chapter 26, you find there. God told uh, Isaac, sojourn in this land and I will bless you. That's an exhortation. You find the example, the Bible says, Isaac sojourned in that land. He planted and he reaped an hundredfold. So God doesn't, doesn't just give a promise. He shows you somebody that that promise has been fulfilled in their life. Exhortation followed by a practical living example of it. God has promised to bless those who tight, focus on the promise, on the promises, and activate the promise by faith. Appropriate the promises by faith. If you can only believe, the Bible says it will be to you according to your faith. Last point: favor and faithfulness of, of the promising. The Father that has promised. Is faithful that promised. Sarah judged God faithful. She reaped and the reward of her trust. Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, and God proved his faithfulness. When God promises, he is faithful to fulfill his promises. His promises, they are yea and amen. amen. The faithfulness of our promising God. 2023, I can declare to you God has been faithful. My question is 2023, have you been faithful? If you have not, we are going into another new year with a new opportunity of being faithful to God. He is always faithful. There is no doubt. The Bible says, even if we don't believe, he cannot deny himself. He abides faithful. The unfaithfulness is always on the side of man. And we need to change. Because if we are faithful like he is faithful, we will live in abundance. We will live in, you know, in pleasure. You know what the Bible says? If they obey and serve him, Job chapter 36, they will live less. Let's read it as we round up. Job 36, verse 11. This is God's guarantee. And you can carry it into 2024. As we're going to rise up and pray. Job 36, verse 11. The if is with man, not with God. But it says, Job 36, verse 11. If they obey and serve him. Why the if? Because they may not obey and serve him. God cannot force you. But if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in Amen. prosperity Amen. and their years Amen. in pleasure. And God stands to back up his word if you obey him, if you serve him. That scripture will be practically and literally fulfilled in your life. Let's rise up and pray and tell God, you tell God, 2023 is going. 
Have you been faithful? 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 2023 is almost over. Have you been faithful? God is asking you tonight, if you have not been faithful, it's time to repent. It's time to tell God, sometimes I'm faithful, sometimes I'm unfaithful, but oh God, keep my feet steady. Keep my faith steady. Help me to believe you. Help me to move on. It's important, my brother. It's important, my sister. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. What you are going to give to God is a seed. He will return it back to you as an harvest. You think I'm spending 500 euro? He will multiply it and, and return it back to you. You think I'm spending 50 euro? He will, he will multiply it and return it back to you. If you honor him, he will honor you. Tell the Lord, if you need to repent, repent. If you need to promise God that in the new year, you will be more faithful. You don't need somebody to chase you to pay your tithe. Willingly, you pay your tithe. You tell God, you have given me life. You've given me opportunity. You've given me strength. You have protected me. You have preserved me. I've been able to earn this money. I'm grateful. This is your share. Oh God, this is your color. I come before you with honor. That's what God is saying. The old year is going. Make a promise to God that 2024 will be different. It will be different. The faithfulness of our promising God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Are you faithful? God is faithful. You also be faithful. God wants us to be faithful. As he is faithful. God is faithful. My brother be faithful. God is faithful. My sister be faithful. God is faithful. As a family, be faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was a man that came to our church several years ago. He doesn't come to church. Then he came to church and said, Pastor, I came for one thing. I said, I'm listening. He said, I want you to tell my wife not to pay tight anymore. Because we need that money in the family. I looked at him and I said, She's not paying tight to me. That's a contract with God. And I have no right to say that. So I told him, if you want to force your wife not to pay tight, that's your responsibility, then you have an answer to God. I, as a pastor, cannot tell her that. Because I want her to be blessed, and I cannot be a person going against God's word. He was looking at me. You want me to use my authority to be destroying somebody's life? I told him, sorry, I don't do that. And you know, and there are times you find husband would not allow wife to pay tight 
wife would not allow husband to pay tight and we need all this money in the family. You will not have enough in the family. I'm not cursing you. No, 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 no. Because you don't understand the mechanisms of how these things work. Make up your mind. Prove God. You know what God says? You pay the tight and prove me. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And God keeps his word. You prove him. And I can tell you that I got saved 20th of December, 1980. This is 31st of December, 2023. How many years? 43 years. Almost 44 years. 43 years. I've proven God. 44, 43 years of working with God, I can tell you. Do you know even as a student, I pay tight. Oh, when I receive a little, I pay tight. And the God proved himself faithful. Yes, he helped me in my schoolwork. He helped me in my academics. My parents were so poor. I finished. I went for scholarship interview. Nobody ever used any long leg for me. I got a scholarship to go and do my master's. I went to Holland. I did my master's. I came back. I applied again to go and do a PhD in the UK. I got two scholarships to go to Manchester to do. Nobody used any long leg for me. God will be there for you. You have been faithful. You were there when God needed you. You will be there when you need him. I don't know anybody that is somebody recommended someone. No, 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 no. God, he goes before you. What does the Bible say? The heart of men are in the hands of God. And with us, whoever he will, it, he turns it. God will stand before you, at, before that scholarship board. This is the person that deserves. Give him. And there's nothing they can do about it. In those little, little areas, that's how God rewards you. The scholarship that I used to do my PhD was more than 20,000 pounds a year. You had me right. More than 20,000 pounds a year was that scholarship. And I'm talking about 1988. Not now. 20,000 pounds. 1988. I got the scholarship. Even if you sell my dad and you sell my mom and you sell everything in our house, I don't think that uh, even 5,000, we cannot, we, we cannot arrive. But God will be there for you. Or even in the university, I pay tight. I didn't say I'm a student. I came from a poor home. Things are difficult. In fact, it is when things are difficult, you need to prove the faithfulness of God so that he can deliver you out of that poverty. I pray that this 2024, there will be a change of attitude. Yeah. God will be able to look down and say, these people are faithful. Let me bless them. Yeah. And he will bless you in Jesus' name. Yeah. We have about five minutes and it's going to be a new year. I want you to pray. What do you want God to do for you in 2024? I want you to begin to pray and tell God, thank him for what he has done for you in 2023 and tell him, oh God, I'm going into the new year. This is what I this is what I want from you. These are my desires for the new year. This is my hope for the new year. And the Lord will do it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I know some of you have already written your request. What you want God to do for you in the new year, you can raise them up. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to believe God with you. And the Lord himself is going to do great and mighty things for you. And we're going to prove the faithfulness of God in 2024. 
once again. Bring out your prayer requests. Bring out your desires for 2024 and raise it unto God. He can read. He can read our requests. He can read our desires. You remember that Ezekiah said, oh God, look at this long letter that uh, Shenakerib has written. He didn't write it to me. Oh. He wrote it to abuse you. Oh God, read. And God read that, that letter and God responded, you know, in a positive way. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Raise them up. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring your people before you. These are their desires for 2024. They already thank you and magnify you for what you did for them in 2023. They are not ungrateful. But they are saying for 2024, we trust you. We Amen. believe you. Amen. We are looking upon to you Amen. to do great and mighty things for us. Oh Amen. God, I pray that all these requests will be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. As I've just preached, you will prove your faithfulness in their life as they are faithful unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. 2024 will be a year of progress for you. Amen. A year of divine provision. Amen. A year of abundant peace. Amen. A year of mighty breakthrough. Amen. A year of good health. Amen. A year Progress and promotion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every godly desire of your heart will be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts perform it. Amen. Everything that is contrary to progress in your life, I command them to pass away with 2023. In Jesus' name. Amen. You will spend your days in prosperity. Amen. Spend your 2024 in pleasures. Amen. Lift up your hand and bless the name of the Lord every day of 2024. Amen. Sorrow will be far from you. Amen. Fear will be far from you. Amen. Terror will be far from you. Amen. Yes, and mercy will follow you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.